Hi everyone and welcome to In Deep Geek Live. Uh, happy Easter if uh, you're watching this live and if you celebrate it. Uh, I hope you're having a fantastic day. This is the Westworld pre-show episode five of season three. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this. We have, as always, got some fantastic guests on today uh, and, and here they are fine looking fellows, uh, both of them. Um, I'll, uh, I'll let uh, Justin first introduce himself. Justin, do you want to say hi? Yeah, happy Easter, everybody. Happy to be on Talking Westworld. Short and sweet. Uh, <laughs> th that was Justin Thomas, everyone. And uh, Hax, do you want to say hi to everyone as well? Hey, everybody. Hax Dogma here. And uh, yeah, ready for uh, ready for some awesome discussions. Excellent news. Okay, well, why don't we start as we normally do? We're going to spend about the first half, roughly the first half of this Looking back to last week's episode, there was a lot going on there. Yes, there was a big reveal at the end, but there was quite a lot of stuff going on in the episode as well. It's worth us unpicking. Um, and then in the second half of the show, we'll look forward to next episode, episode five. We've got a promo trailer, a lot of stuff going on there. Um, Justin, I think I think we've last you were last on just before episode one, so I'm not sure whether we have a chance yet. Why, why don't we? start with you what's what's your take on the season as a whole are you enjoying it what, what do you think i'm really liking it uh they're touching on some of the over uh arcing you know messages and uh themes of, of the <laughs> series but they're doing it in a playful way which makes sense for this stage of the story because season one was about can they season two was how do they meaning get out of the park now season three is their first like initiation into the world so um it is going to be action-packed i love a beretta versus a samurai sword but there's also the deep meta in it uh that's a lot of fun i think that they have not lost the death i think it's more there than ever because i think they're the story embodies it this isn't a story about if robots can become conscious or not because we don't have an answer to that this is a story about what ethical behavior is and how it go about it so i'm really loving it man i'm really and i really like the dolores twist that's all i'll put on it because i don't like holding back just for the sake of holding back and there's no reason for dolores to say you are me right to the rest of the hosts she never had to say that but there would have been a reason to be like listen angela this is what's going on so it really worked well i love the dolores i'm a i'm a firm believer in the dolores <laughs> so uh, yeah i'm loving it i think it works and it's easy going and it's fun to watch but it also keeps that emotional depth yeah, we were talking about nomen nomenclature slightly just before we came on here. I've decided to stick with Dolores's. Uh, I, I know you're you're going with Dolores. Hacks, do you want to do a tiebreaker for us? Are you Dolores's <laughs> or Dolores? Uh, so someone actually pointed out that it's because it's a, a female group. It's it should be the the Dolores. Uh, Dolores, uh, oh, uh, Deloria or something like that. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm Dolores all the way. Yeah, but how to host identify? <clears throat> don't, like most... don't don't push her. <laughs> yeah, don't push it on them. Sounds like the most ominous, Delore. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's probably true. That's a lot oh. more ominous. Um, but just while we're on this sort of overarching theme, so my take is because uh, Justin sort of introduced this. Is so my take is this season is as much about what does it mean to be conscious? What does mm. that? What 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 does it mean to be to be a have free will? To be good? To be not good? all those kind of things. What's your kind of take on what the overall theme so far is of this season? You know, I, I'm not really sure. I think that a, a good part of the the first two seasons have both encompassed that, or maybe just start, you know, starting the, the building blocks of that. Maybe this season is, you know, where these big ethical debates come in. But I, I do think that <clears throat> the overarching point of this season is maybe, you know, to, to, to showcase that, uh, there is no right way for humanity to proceed, right? If, if all of us go with, uh, you know, the, the best option that allows us to have the most prosperous, prosperous lives in exchange for, you know, our data being, being a part of the engine. Um, you know, I think that that's ultimately the big cautionary tale, uh, is that yes, we could theoretically live in a world where, and maybe we do live in a world where, um, <clears throat> you know, our data is fed into a machine and, and, you know, string pullers control the system, but it's, you know, I think it's it's more of just like the exploration of of should we live in that world, and I think that this this you know what Dolores is going to go with and what the sh shape I'm sorry what the show is going to shape around is that we probably shouldn't you know contribute to that system, uh, and uh, you know I don't know I think that that's pretty much the the big the big debate is is big data and uh, you know what we should do with it. 
I, I think that's probably fair. Um, I just spotted in the chat Bill Costello saying Dolores is a Spanish name, so Dolores is, is the only thing that makes sense. I'll, I'll go with Bill. He sounds like a wise man. Ooh, um, <laughs> so let's go. Let, let's dig into the last episode. So we've got episode four. Before we get to the big reveal, there was a lot of stuff that was going on. And this was the episode that uh, we thought and turned out this way to be bringing us back up to speed with what was going on with William. Now, um, Justin, let's go with you to start with. Do you, th first of all, what was your take on what was going on with William? And secondly, do you think that's it now? Do you think that's that's what we're going to get? Was that his whole contribution to season uh, three? Uh, no, I, I overall. So what's going on with William? Um, I've seen a few complaints about, OK, so they're further exploring and hammering down. Are we free? Are we living in a deterministic world? Um, that's already been stated. Right. But I, I do feel that, yes, there is a large part, portion of this show that is asking questions, not answering them. That is what Westworld does. It asks us what it means to be human, what it means to be ethical through technology. So William's. Um, part in this is yes no longer hammering down just hopefully the idea that we can kind of think about okay what 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 do we really see as natural what do we see as real you know all these blurred lines that they've hammered down with with deterministic and you know free will and all these different uh ways of thinking and they went down a route where it is now this character's arc we care about william whether you hate him or you love him you feel for him so now it's where he goes yes it is hammering down a point that's already been made but i don't think that's bad this is somebody that would feel a lot of existential you know crises due to what he's done um he will never have internal redemption in the sense of like we don't want to see this guy being like yay i killed my daughter i'm having a good time but we do want to see this guy have one more virtuous act and this is where that's going so this is no longer a theme driven um narrative this is more just the character uh, in my opinion. And I really loved it. I really loved it. It brought back that meta aspect and that's it. You know, it's done just because the point's been made doesn't mean you can't keep using it because guess what? It's still a fucking point. Sorry. I mean, you're almost worse. it's still a point. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I absolutely. And I think what it's quite for me, it, it's, it's quite telling that we are now theoretically halfway through this story arc. We haven't yet had confirmation that, that this is going to be renewed, but the idea was that this was going to be a five season arc. Yeah, And this point we're at right now is exactly halfway through that. We're halfway through the middle season. And what we had with, uh, with William uh, and Dolores this episode was the complete opposite of where they started. Mm -hmm. So we started with him having all the power, him uh, tormenting her, her being stuck in, uh, in her sort of... Uh, a, a, a prison effectively a place that she couldn't escape uh him having all the money him having all the influence and, and absolutely everything now it has switched all the way around so it's like we've got this complete downward curve for for william and then perhaps this is the low point and we're going to see him come back up again after this um what's your What's your take on that, Hacks? Do you think do you think this is the bottom point? Do you think he's going to start crawling back up after this? I think if there is a worse point than this, then <laughs> I don't want to see what it is. Um, yeah, I, I mean, he is literally being haunted by his action, right? And the only <clears throat> the only real you know unethical thing that we've seen him do, right, is the murder of his daughter. And I think that, yeah, I mean, he is being haunted by the image of of his dead daughter. And assuming he makes it through the rest of the story, I think that undoubtedly it's it's a, a redemption arc. Um, you know, I hope it is, but I also think that him and Dolores will will at some point side with each other. And I think that Dolores is very much not the you know protagonist that that we think she is. And you know, as such, William's involvement may just be another cog in in the Dolores machine that undoes humanity. Well, sorry, what do you mean that Dolores isn't the protagonist that? She seems to be. What, what do you mean so, by that? Yeah, so, <clears throat> like, I, I think the show is very much shaped around this idea of, of uh, you know, we sympathize with Dolores in the first season. She then, you know, enacts revenge uh, from season two to, to the start of this season. And, you know, it's, it, the start of that is like, yes, you know, redemption, you're killing the people that have that have hurt you. Um, great, go for it. But, you know, as, as we explore this idea of, you know, destroying the rest of humanity, then, you know, small children could get pulled into that you know humanity umbrella and i think that 
that will you know really shape what the audience considers Dolores to be. Um, you know, I I don't think that she is the protagonist of this of the show. Um, <clears throat> I've seen that that others do. I've seen that um, you know a, a lot of people do like Dolores, um, but I think that you know it's masks. It's like you know it's the facade of like yes, keep rooting for this character. There's like some you know secret plot going on, but then there's going to be a twist of oh yeah, she's car- she's destroying humanity, right? And then we're not going to be like oh do that. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think if if it turns out that she frees humanity in some way in this season, then I think we will be seeing be, uh, yeah. a different side to her. Justin, sorry, were you trying to come in there? No, no, I agree that she she is the protagonist, but protagonist doesn't mean she needs to be, you know, uh, have this uh, noble endeavor. I believe that I agree with you, Hacks, on the point of, I've always said that she's not the Spartacus that we made her. We, we've all elected her to be Spartacus, and she is uh, obviously going down a road that has uh, a lot of uh, uh, hurdles, and it's problematic. So, again, it's asking questions, not for you know, per se answering so many. So I agree with you on that, but she is a protagonist and it's a folly of her way just to show us, but it's more about ethical treatment. I'd still stick with she's the protagonist, but I do agree that it's not like she's like <clears throat> showcasing the right way to like rule the world, the right way to have a revolution, the right way for consciousness that it's a theory of mind. I agree with you on that, but she definitely is driving the narrative. You know, this is a story about her journey and who she's yeah, taking along. In, in, in pure literary terms, as a protagonist being the person who is driving the action, then I think she is. She's yeah. not, however, necessarily the hero whose story it is uh, that it begins when her story begins and ends when her story ends and we're rooting for it. Um, uh, I, th- I think that is still slightly up for grabs. Who Who is the hero, if anyone, of this story? Yeah. I'm not a hundred percent sure. It's, it it might be Maeve, you know, it, it, is that she she's someone that we uh, we kind of we want what she wants. First of all, she wanted to understand what was going on. Yeah, of course, great, understand what's going on. Then she wanted to escape this prison she was in. Great. Then she wanted to find a child. Great. All the way through, we've kind of sympathised with her objectives. Whereas Dolores, we're not always sure what her objectives are, and when when we are sure then we're not entirely sure whether we agree. i agree mave will be the one in the end in my prediction uh but dolores will make that happen the virtue will come through mave but the hands will be too bloody by the revolution through dolores so it's possible through dolores but mave will prevail but yeah the, the dolores is you know driving this though but yeah i do agree it's like we've all elected her spartacus right yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and well, you know the the verbiage there of, of being a protagonist like i think that you know, I simply meant as this role reversal, right? I think that she, you know, will come out to be the antagonist of the story at some point. Well, which one uh, of the yeah. Dolores? Yeah. Yeah. There are many <clears throat> Doloreses these days. Uh, um, okay, let's, uh, just while I'm uh, thinking of it, uh, just a very quick thank you. I had a couple of super chats before we uh, went live from Maura Lee saying, wishing all those celebrating a very happy and blessed Easter. Thank you, Robert, for all your content on both channels and especially on Westworld, loving the season so far. Also for Hacks Dogma and uh, Vanessa Cole, who was originally due to, to come on, unfortunately had to uh, drop out. But do not worry, we will get Vanessa back on uh, very soon. Um, Justin, uh, thank I you so much. I tried to take her pearl. Take... I tried to get her pearl, <laughs> so, so it didn't Justin, work, if you can tell. Justin it didn't work. jumped in uh, like, like, like the, the true hero he is. Mm-hmm. Um, let's let's move on to Maeve, shall we? Uh, and also, there's, there was a super stick of Maura. Sorry, I didn't uh, forgot to say thank you so much, Maura. I really completely appreciate all of your support. Um, but um, let's talk about Maeve for a moment, because because there was um, there was a Maeve storyline in here. We had lots of storylines all sort of intersecting for pretty much the first time this season. Um, let's go. I'll go to you, hacks first on this one um is she out of the simulation yet is she Ooh. is this is this really Maeve that we're looking at this is this is my big question for Maeve because uh, and somebody in the chat earlier i noticed said how much of this episode was in the mirror world or was in the simulation um the the biggest likelihood i would say is Maeve but i would be Fascinated to hear your take on this one. Yeah, I, you know, I, 
it could be right the entire thing that with Maeve could be in the simulation and it would explain some of the you know oddities of of the episode right you know the fact that Musashi uh was was the leader of the Yakuza in some miraculous way that Dolores was able to replace the leader of of you know criminal organization he worked his way <laughs> yeah excuse me <clears throat> um and he uh you know, this like idea of smuggling bodies, you know, the mortician has has this brief line about when, you know, she gets the, the DNA from the little girl in Kiev and that the Yakuza helped her uh, smuggle bodies. Then it's like, well, what bodies? You know, what is that talking about? That's something that we've never heard of. Um, you know, that she she wouldn't need that. She smuggled five pearls out uh, and that she had a, a way to recreate those bodies in Arnold's house. What what is she doing? Um, and then. You're like, well, there's an inconsistency with the amount of, um, or with the male and female hosts that were printed in the house, and Musashi could have been one, one of the ones that was, you know, exported. I'm sorry, not exported, uh, <laughs> uh, smuggled out, and uh, you know, and then, and then it's like this whole weird matrix of of what ifs, and the whole thing is is predicated on why Musashi, uh, Dolores, and and Musashi have never had an interaction on screen, and you know, Shogun World was assumingly built after. Um, you know, after the investors came in and after uh, Delos kind of took over and, and, you know, made it more attractive to more people. And Dolores has only ever had one storyline, so they would never thematically have interacted. So, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's just really odd. So it, it, it can be really explained if this is an inconsistency in the simulation interpreting what Maeve, you know, all the information that Maeve has. And as such, I think that a good portion of, of Maeve's storyline could be in the simulation, if not all of it. And it all goes back to the idea that um, last episode we talked about, you know, Serac needs to convince Maeve to be on his side. And that could be as simple as what we've seen, um, or it could be as elaborate as this entire thing, right? To, to kind of, you know, make her realize that they are, are connected in the same goal. Um, so as such, it could be anything or nothing. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Justin, have you got any thoughts on this? Do you think she's in, in the simulation or not? No. And that's me. But, uh, the thing is, <laughs> is Musashi. Okay. Hex is right. It doesn't make sense because Dolores doesn't know him. Why would she bring him along with us? But here's what does make sense. If you have a story in which you need Maeve to have this, uh, you know, contradiction in, uh, uh opposite opinion in ideology and philosophy about how to go about things she needs to recognize who dolores has replicated so it's plot convenience uh, con uh mistaken for for simulation in my opinion i do agree with hacks because there's a lot of questions this questions that this raises it's like first off they need more what to create hosts right like they say they pretty much i i said this last night in my stream it's like i don't know exactly what they need from delos but like it's essentially they need more ink for the 3d printer just they need something um but there's a lot of this uh milk you know that goes back to the greek gods and their creation story and all that milk and honey but yeah it doesn't make a lot of sense that it would be musashi other than it's somebody because that's somebody that they can identify but what we take away from this is mave says you said you're going to free the host all you've done is replicate yourself so what would it say to you robert or hacks if i said come on my team join me on this journey all these other people are with you like who's with you i'm like a whole bunch of justins it's not like a void of confidence, right? Uh, so it's kind of like this is your cause, not a cause for all of us to bring along. If it was truly a cause for all, you could bring others because others agreed with you. So the whole point of there's that juxtaposition with the philosophy and the ideology there. So yeah, I agree, but I wouldn't mistake it for a simulation. I think the simulation was happening with William and uh, and we'll see it one more time. That's it. Well, I mean, I'm firmly of the view that Maeve was in a simulation. And I think that uh, we we all agree that there were inconsistencies in what mm -hmm. was going on there with Musashi. I think that there was something didn't add up. One of the things that for me really didn't add up was the idea that previously what uh, Doros had done had taken a real world person and then just put a host in them. And so they were secretly a host and nobody knew. This time, she seems to, if we take what we've seen there, she took uh, a head of the Yakuza, took away the head of the Yakuza and completely replaced them with an entire new body 
and everybody suddenly thought still seemed to think that this, this was Sato. That doesn't for me that doesn't make sense. Yeah. But but I think that the 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 clincher for me was and I can't remember whether you remember this uh, hacks last this time last week we were discussing this idea of mirror world and and being um uh, the, the fact that Rhea Boehm, and we will come on to this in more detail later but Rhea Boehm can't identify people doing good things it, it doesn't quite understand people improving and all the rest of it and then we saw that with Lee Sizemore back in the, the Maeve Heavy episode episode two and that is how Maeve figured out that she was in a simulation was because the the, the simulation didn't couldn't figure out what Lee Sizemore's motivation was he assumed that he must have wanted her but actually it was just a self-sacrificial act and i can remember th this time last week i said what we should be looking out for is instances where a, a character's motivations have been incorrectly guessed that they have been uh, assumed to be worse than they actually were and that was exactly what we saw here was we saw musashi said uh, you left me there to die and Maeve shook her head and said, no, I didn't. Yeah. I gave you the choice. And uh, for me, that was just a, oh, this is another moment where the, the machine has, it can't figure out good it, intentions. In all fairness, though, that's the Loris's perspective on it, on what happened. And now, you know what I mean? Like, in all fairness, this is not Musashi speaking for himself. So, you know, it comes down to what does uh, Serac really need? Does he need the data for his computer or does he because he claims he sells it to Maeve as he needs the data and it's not necessarily the host, you know, because he can't say I'm going to rid it of host. So which is it? Does he need the data? Does he need a better computer or does he need to get rid of the, um, you know, inconsistencies? Well, he needs like the, the data same, yeah. to get rid of the inconsistencies to make uh, the better computer. Uh, in my view, at least. Yeah. And uh, yes, that you say that that could be Dolores's term. Dolores has no idea about what happened in that interaction. Yeah, she she, she read she books. So, no. <clears throat> so, <throat> so uh, that is a for, for me. It's just that nothing adds up, and it hit that one box that I was looking for of a an incorrect assumption about motivation. Yeah. So. I'm still very much on board with the Maeve is in a simulation and this is Serac going through various iterations of how to get Maeve to track down um, Dolores. But let's uh, let's go, I'll go to, to you on this one, Justin, because you started talking about it, the white goo, the milk of the gods, mm -hmm. whatever it is, the, the stuff <laughs> that you create hosts out of, they're, they're clearly stockpiling it. This, this seems to be the plan in some way, whether it's simulation or not, that the Yakuza are stockpiling this stuff. Does this mean that Dolores' plan is to create some sort of host army? Yeah, she wants to procreate, but not in a biological sense. Uh, you know, there's no reason to believe that they need to do things the way we do. We have a, uh, a very... Um, <sighs> objective uh view on how how creatures are, are formed right they have to be done the way we do it so this whole show is showing us that humanity um you know ethical behavior and all that consciousness something we can't prove ourselves because you know a lot of people say oh they they're not like us well then explain us please please explain us explain how consciousness works the closest thing we can get is technology so this is a narrative on that i do believe that she is going to procreate i believe that they will have more pearls as soon as hale's version of the delori which i love i wish i would have coined man i love it uh uh you know as soon as she replicates you will have another bean and say they get attached to a human like nathan OK, you will have more of a sympathetic, empathetic perspective. Every one will variate. And that is the same. DNA holds memories when we procreate. You don't have to give natural birth again, natural birth. We call it natural because everything is the book of us. Why are you special? Because I'm me. You know, there's no proof. There's no evolutionary tie. There's no intellect tie. There's nothing that ties us to consciousness. We cannot prove it. So we should not dismiss it and others. And I think that what they're doing is, yes, trying to replicate it in for better or worse. I'm not saying that Dolores is going about I'm with hacks it, oh, it, by no means. It's, she's Spartacus. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, they're going about it. And uh, there is inconsistencies in Misashi, why she would pick him in, in, in aspects like that. But that is a catalyst, um, you know, uh, for, for Mabes character right there in Dolores you know what does it say when you just bring along a whole bunch of use to support what supposedly is a group effort 
that's you know but yes i do believe they're stockpiling ink <laughs> essentially <laughs> uh, that's fair enough have you got anything uh hacks before before we move yeah. on properly to dolores <clears throat> and the big reveal and the plan and all the rest of it have you got anything else from from this last episode about Maeve that you want to pick up on or or in fact bernard uh who who mm -hmm. was there and he just sort of like appeared and got captured again which is a little bit of a damn squib episode yeah. for him but is, is there anything you want to just pick up on on that before we move on yeah well well you know keeping it on this idea of uh host milk this you know uh, ink to to make new new people uh new hosts i you know the implication if this isn't a simulation is that the simulation is viewing this as dolores's plan right and i think that you know even that could be called into question if that is dolores's plan why would she need you know, so much of this substance that I guess we don't really know the quantity of or how much it takes to make a single host, but why would she need all of this? And the implication is to make a host army, right? To, you know, have this, you know, master plan, re replace people. Um, but ultimately, just I view this as like a force, right? To have, you know, just maybe even replacing every member of the Yakuza and they just exist now as, as hosts. Um, <clears throat> but the whole thing, or the, or the point that I want to add to this is that this idea of an army, I don't see that happening. I don't see a host army waging war on people ever. And I don't think that Rehoboam sees that either, right? Because, um, you know, he says that he's not afraid of, of you know, Dolores. It's humanity that, that has always been my fear. And so I don't see this like big force, right? But I think that Rehoboam is seeing this. And I think that the only other time that we've really heard of this is when um, Hale is is witnessing the riot control bots you know, being created. And I think that because these are the only two instances of like this oppressive giant force and like an outright assault on humanity, I think that both can be called into question if that is Dolores' plan at all. Yeah, I mean, and I have to follow on with my logic that if if Maeve is in a simulation, if this is in the mirror world, the world that has been mapped out by Rehoboam, then perhaps all of that isn't actually the case. Maybe that is just Rehoboam making assumptions about what, what Dolores would do. Um, and maybe the big twist at the end of all of this is that Actually, you know what? Dolores isn't going to go and try and kill all of humanity and replace them and all the rest of it. Maybe she's actually got slightly more noble ideals. Maybe she does actually improve and become a, a better human host or whatever. Um, okay, let's move on to Dolores then, as we've started talking about her. Uh, Hanks, I'll go to you first on this one. So uh, what we've got is um, uh, we've got this idea that she's... Uh, she's she's now chasing down Liam Liam Dempsey Jr. She's she's captured him. She's got his money. She's got the, all the access that he has to Rehoboam. As far as we can tell, she does. You know, she calls up information. Why does she still need him? Yeah. So it's it's really interesting. So why would you ever take someone hostage ever? Right for money, for your personal gain, for. Um, love or blackmail or you know a whole plethora of things but who would she be doing that for um we don't know that he has anyone left other you know other than this like potential father figure of Sirak, who you know over the course of 15 years you know helped create this thing that his father also worked on i think there's a potentially a link there but at the same time i don't see at all Sirak is this character that would care what happened to you know to liam unless Rehoboam says to, you know, care, right? And then otherwise she would, or he would act because he sees a better future if he does act. I think that the only reason that, you know, flat out without this like convoluted what if simulation matrix is that she wants to convert him. You know, I don't think that she, like she has his money. Um, no one that we, that we know about in the plot cares about him anymore other than these best friends that are, you know, like throwaway characters, probably it could, it could only be to try to get back at Surak, And I don't think Surak really cares. So if it's not that, then it's probably to try to convert him. Um, but at the same time, you know, we have to try to weigh if, if he does get converted, what power does he have? 
like he has read access to the outer layers of, of Rehoboam, you know, would he actually be a good pawn? So I think it's, <clears throat> you know, I think there's a, a, a fine line. I think that there, it's either, you know, convert him to see the error of his ways and see insights issue and, you know, controlling nature of humanity or, you know, to get back at Surak. And I just, I don't see Surak as a touchable character from that perspective. Okay. Uh, I mean, I think, I, I, I find that fascinating. My take was always this was something to do with access. This idea that mm. she's going to try and convert him, uh, I, I find fascinating because I, I thought, well, is that, how how would that happen? And what, what, what is she actually trying to do? What will she do to try and convert him in some way? Um, Justin, what's your take on this? Why, why do you think that she's still, I mean, she's got everything from him already. What does she still need with him? Do you think? Really, again, we fall into a little bit, and I've loved in a season of a, a plot hole here because he only has access, as he says, to the outer layers. Nothing is, you know, um, given to him other than that. So, yeah, what does she need? And as we talk about converting, this is where Caleb comes into play, too. It's like, does she need to convert people or does she need to show them the light, meaning like, do you need to convert them to her way of thinking or just show them that others, meaning Rehoboam, is not working like she did with Caleb, you know, in ways that are advantageous. So it's like kind of shining the light, but it does seem like a useless endeavor, right, to keep playing along with this uh, Liam. But I think what comes down to it here is this is a simple minded good because a, a, in the <laughs> when you put the optics are slim on film and, and television when you put people on screen they're only as good or bad as the other people his friends are way douchier than logan could ever be so like they are portraying you know liam is a very uh empathetic or at least sympathetic you know character he is a a good guy in comparison now he's a black hat supposedly in the uh park but again you know like uh, me and hex had an argument about what that means but you know at this point it's a social norm to go do that so it's like this guy's a good guy in all for all intents and purposes so what is the reason of keeping diving deeper and deeper into liam where he has very little i mean if liam wanted to change something i mean i doubt he could change if he had cheerios or honey smacks in the morning uh but you know it is what it is i think that yeah he was a door into the association why they keep diving deeper i think can only lead us to what happened with his father because they will exploit that against Sirach. something happened with his father that Serac was a part of, and Dolores will exploit that, and she will bring Liam upon her cause. Get what I mean? That's the only reason because they've explicitly stated, and they're good writers. There are plot holes, and I'm always don't ex you know mistake plot holes for something deeper. Uh, but I think that this is uh, very um, you know direct what they're doing. I think that they are leading us down the path of Dolores is going to reveal something to Liam that will give Liam the uh, motivation to work along with her the same way Caleb has, you know, which is not, uh, you know, really ideally the best way to go about things because she has the answer for these promises that she's made. She has to, you know, pay it out at the end. So we'll see what happens after that. But yeah, I, I think that she has to lead him down a path that will, will shine some light on what Serac did. It's not about she's good. It's about the other person's bad. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I don't think we're under any illusions that he's this shining knight, a wonderful human being who, who who we should all look up to. But I think they're presenting him as this character who um, he was born into privilege. He's just been going along with it, really. And uh, he's got some slightly annoying friends. Uh, he's clearly got. Uh, so so Connells is clearly sort of running him and he is being used as this front for what's been going on and he's not really stood up to it in any way. So I think that seems to be the impression we're getting is a slightly weak-willed person who was born into incredible privilege. I mean, he seems perhaps to have some uh, um, sort of redeeming characteristics but but we've not yet seen anything from him that suggests that he's on this great arc of self-discovery uh but Quick, let's so go, go ahead someone in, someone in the chat said um maybe she needs him for genetic material related to his father and that's a really cool aspect of this i i, I think that maybe that's it right because Liam Dempsey Sr. is someone that we've met in the trailers. That's someone that we've only met by name in the show. I think that Liam Dempsey Sr. and Surak's story is going to shape a large part of a, a large part of of what this season's story is. 
um, you know, the creation of Rehoboam and, and how, you know, it, it went from being this good utilitarian idea of, of just making the world a better place uh, to, you know, possibly this abomination that has, you know, hurt people and, and, you know, classified people to, you know, live lesser, lesser than lives because other people could live better lives. And, you know, this idea of needing genetic material, you know, kind of makes me think of authentication, right? Because it's been a huge part of this, uh, of this season. Um, you know, we see the, the, the marker to, to get uh, funds out of your bank uh, with your genetic material, um, you, you know, your blood and designing Rehoboam to, to have this. I think it's entirely possible that maybe that's it is that there's a fail safe to, um, you know, keep, I don't know. There's something that would let him back into the system with his genetic marker. Yeah, I, I like that idea a lot. I mean, as to say, I've I've always had this thought that this is about access with him, and it doesn't seem to make sense from the he says that he can only sort of like look at it and and you know run a few tests and all the rest of it, but he can't actually change any of the inner workings or algorithms or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, the, the this has been something that they've been playing up quite a lot, particularly this last episode with this um, with Caleb when. Uh, Dolores sort of you know, mugged that guy, took his blood and injected it into Caleb, um, which did make me wonder, and Justin, I'd love your view on this one, did make me wonder, what does she want Caleb for? Because we've already been, we've been talking about what does she want Liam for, but Caleb, I mean, he is a nobody in a certain sense, or he's an everybody is perhaps a better way of putting it. That he doesn't seem to have, from what we've seen, any particular special skills. Um, is it just that he's a human and she needs a human for various things? Like, for example, she obviously couldn't just inject that blood into herself and it would work. She needed a human to be able to go in and pretend to be this, uh, this, this guy, the fund manager. Is it just that he's a human or is there something specific about him that makes Dolores want him on her side well is she blowing up a plane and she decides that a few people on there need to get off because she sees you know some humanity she sees like some good people within that then she saves a few people is it that she needs him or is it that she's she's saving him it is her goal to destroy this world and she's salvaging the you know this piece of humanity or is he the key to something liam seems a little more like a key and again i think it links to the insight into his father more than anything he doesn't have access to the machine so it's access to his personal uh you know agenda meaning his motivations and emotional stance so i i think that caleb is more just a uh, exception to the rule not to rule uh for dolores that yeah she's pulling him off the plane before the bomb goes off i don't think she needs yeah. him i think she's saving him in her eyes yeah <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, th I think I'm, I think I'm with that at the moment. I think we're still waiting to see what the whole backstory is. There will be a bit more backstory that we're going to yes, be hearing tonight. But we're going to get it the, he at did the moment. It the does seem to be just he's a human. He's a human who surprised her by, again, this theme running through the season by doing a better thing than she was expecting by refusing to give her away even when he was going to be killed. Uh, yes. He he has he has stepped up. And for that, then, yes, perhaps she's sort of like chosen him in some way. But she chose him before that. Let's not forget. She she asked for information about him and uh, uh, went to find him even before she knew that he was resisting. Well, a, a, uh, after the ambulance incident, she asked for information on him. Exactly. But then, standing yeah. up for torture. But there was a semblance of hope there, a semblance of, you know, like, uh, like ethical behavior that was displayed. So my argument is that, you know, Dolores will save, uh, you know, Caleb, but the issue will be she's not saving humanity. It has not reinforced her faith in humanity. It, it will be, you know, there's going to come a point and it will come soon where Caleb says why or no to Dolores and that's going to be a problem yeah and we actually see in the we'll talk about it in the second half of this uh we that there's in the promo trailer for next episode then Bernard asks presumably uh Caleb you know have you ever sort of questioned her what she's asking you to do um but let's move on to the the big reveal as it were this the the, the, the fact that all of these hosts that we didn't know who they were 
um, they are in fact lawlesses. Now, um, uh, let's for, just because I saw a few people in the chat just sort of querying the numbers and all the rest of it, I'll just set out the situation as we understand it, which is so uh, Dolores uh, in the body of Charlotte Hale escaped Westworld with five pearls. So we've got Dolores plus five. Now, uh, one of those is Bernard. Uh, she then sort of put herself back into her own body and had Charlotte Hale uh, was another. So that's second is Charlotte Hale, the third is Connells, the fourth, although I have my uncertainties about whether that's in the real world or the mirror world, is Musashi, and that leaves one more unaccounted for at the moment. So that's the situation we have right now. Um, but uh, Hacks, what's your what's your reaction to this? That this the, her just it's all her. Yeah. What, what's your, what, what's your thought? I was excited. I was like, I thought it was so well done. As soon as, as soon as uh, <clears throat> Hale started shaving his neck, I was like, oh my God, it's her. They're about to reveal it. And then, you know, double twist. It's also Musashi. It's also, you know, uh, Martin. And uh, it, it was just so, I loved it. I thought it was a great reveal. Um, and I think that it's, you know, it's not as simple as just, it's all Dolores, right? It is copies of Dolores, and and they are all, all seem to be submissive of of this, you know, Dolores Prime, right? And you know, I love love this idea of what happens when when the leader dies of that, and you know, what we know as as Dolores is is shaped from the remnants of of what has happened this season. You know, I think that leaving season two, we have this like you know ruthless murderer trying to destroy humanity. And how we get that to a character that we once again like, I think it's entirely possible that you know potentially the the Hale uh, Dolores, um, you know, someone who has seemed more emotional, who uh, is empathetic empathetic to humans, I think it's entirely possible that she makes it out alive, right, and you know becomes the Dolores that we that we know. Um, and yeah, I mean, I just love this idea because it does seem like it doesn't seem like they're carbon copies of each other. You know, it's. The interaction between Hale and Dolores are just so jarring. And we don't know, like we've seen that happen with Hale, but we haven't seen that happen with um, Martin or Musashi or or anyone else. So it either didn't happen, you know, pointing to this emotional affect that was placed in Hale and, and not, you know, of the other hosts, or, you know, it's happened off screen, right, is the other, the other option there. But I don't know. I just think that, it's more of a fragment of, of Dolores and instead of, you know, wholeheartedly just carbon copies, because, you know, if, if five of me were telling me, if I was telling five of me what to do, no way, <laughs> yeah. no, no way, dude, no way would I listen to myself. Um, you know, it would, it would very much be anarchy. So uh, yeah, I think that, uh, yeah, it, it, it's interesting. I love the reveal. I mean, there there definitely is something that is that they're not even before we get into what we will talk about in just one second, which is that the potential divergences in the future. Even at that original point, the Dolores Prime, I love that phrase, Dolores Prime is is in charge. And everybody else, all the other Doloreses seem to accept that. They just seem to take orders. So there's something going on. There's a hierarchy thing happening there at the very least. Um, Justin, do you what, what's your take on this in terms of the are they all the same or or are there slight differences between them? What's going on there? At the point of replication, and I brought this up in a tweet to you, my friend, and you answered me with a video, uh, Robert. That was wonderful. <laughs> I, I I was like, oh, he didn't answer me on Twitter, but he put out a video. Uh, no, I, I'm joking. I loved it. <laughs> I, I took it as a sign of respect. I was because you explored Dolores versus um, you know uh, Hale in, in all of these aspects. So at the point of repl replication, in my opinion, this should be a blink of the eye, and it does not add up that Hale says, "Why, why am I not able to be?" myself like you you know blah 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 so that is essentially hail questioning you know that is dolores questioning dolores it should be i decided to do this blink of an eye now i did this and then you shouldn't need to be sold on the logic so i think there's a flaw there but as i'm going to go and it might not be exciting for you guys but i think it's just to push that sentiment and it's to push that idea of how they can diverge so quickly because you talked about five hexes 
you know, first off, all very well spoken. I'll give you that. Uh, you know what I mean? Like very well spoken hexes. Uh, but they will diverge when you put them on different roads. This is nature versus nurture that we're exploring. It's what makes you you are. How finite is that emotional spine of yours? Have you ever realized if you ever met somebody that you haven't seen in seven years or, you know, since college that they can't change? You say, bro, you've changed. Oh, no way. No way. Not even not, not that they just haven't changed. It's not even possible right? Not even possible for me to change scientifically, biologically, philosophically, not a thing that can happen. Your girlfriend kicks you out of the house. You can change in a moment. You've already changed. Change can come very, very quickly. And this is a, a commentary on what makes us us. And this is a commentary for the whole show. It's overreaching. It's, it, it's something deeper. And yes, there's a flaw in it because I agreed. I put it out on Twitter. Robert has a wonderful video on it. I'm sure Hex is going to have an intelligent take on it. And it doesn't make sense because it's like, I blink my eyes. Once I said, put on a black shirt, once I have this blue shirt on, I don't say, Justin, why did I put on this black shirt? It's me making the decision. Vanessa Cole came up with the best logical answer uh, on Twitter. And she said, it is a chance that these are backdated pearls. So they're not absolutely up to the date of replication. Because again, like it should be a blink of an eye. Once you replicate, this decision isn't a decision that was made for you. This is other Dolores's. They don't look at it as somebody else, but they will diverge once external experiences happen. But it has not been stated within the narrative that there's an exception to the rule. So thus, we must take it at face value, in my opinion. We must take it as these are up-to-date pearls because there's no reason to say, by the way, people, these are up-to-date. But there is a reason to say is all I had was these backups. So that's my stance on it. I think that they're pushing the sentiment. It doesn't make a whole lot of uh, sense for them to do that um, logically, but they need that injected into the story. And it happened. And I thought it was beautiful. I give them a pass because even when Westworld messes up, they mess up in a way that makes me ask like meaningful questions. That's all I'll say. And I stand by my well, uh, the well spoken yeah. hacks in, in Robert. I'll take 10 of them all day. I ordered well, 10. Uh, you're, you're a gentleman. I, I think yeah. that the, uh, for me, the clearly what they've said is that the starting point is that they're all Dolores's. Mm -hmm. Even if we accept that they are all Dolores's, then yes, we don't know when the copy is from. Um, th the very least, then the main Dolores is Dolores Prime. She's had all the experience of coming out into the real world and coming up with the plan because yeah you know, she tells the plan to uh, hail so yeah. she's come up with the plan to start with and the, the the hail is not there born with this idea of what the plan is already so that has to have happened before then um but the big play the big difference is what happens afterwards now jonathan nolan i don't know whether you guys picked up on it jonathan nolan um was talking to someone like the new york times after the last episode and he was he was talking about this and said that uh, if you that the, the idea that they enjoying exploring is if you take the same person with the same experience but then put that person in somebody else's shoes for a long period of time so they're experiencing things that they're experiencing they're, they're seeing their challenges and all the rest of it that will change that person absolutely and and so the the charlotte hale version of dolores will be changed and we've started to see that already she will be changed and the question is where will that take her will she end up in the same place hacks what's your take in terms of that kind of divergence do yeah do you I, think we're going to see dolores v dolores uh definitely possible um <clears throat> I, I do like this idea that you know maybe they're not a fragment maybe they are legitimate you know fidelity copies of of dolores and you know we're seeing exactly how uh how divergences happen right or how you know this collective experience can can be different for um you know, people in different bodies going through different things, starting at the same spot. But you know, I don't know. I, I well, I, I, I will say I'm more inclined to believe it's that now. Um, I think that if they are showing us this, you know, this is what happens when you put Dolores inside of a, a hail body, and you know, she's more emotional, but then has more of a, a motherly, matronly. Um, you know, take and, and murders people who would, you know, threaten her child. I think that that, her human child, I think that that is the Dolores that, that we want, right? You know, she is very much a champion for, for, you know, both her own survival and, you know, protecting the innocent. And that's a, you know, that's a hero in my book. Um, so I think that, you know, in a sense that at some point this plan will have to come to an end and whether it's, you know, a single Dolores surviving 
and that becomes the new Dolores that we know and love. Or, you know, they succeed and at the end of this, they then have to, you know, put the rings together and merge back into one Dolores. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. In, in that sense, I, I think that it is possible that they go against each other. I think more likely there's just going to be a single surviving Dolores. And uh, no. then we'll have to figure out what happens from there. Yeah, no, no yeah. sorry. Uh, no, go ahead, Justin. Yeah, like, again, I agree because experience shapes your life it, it shapes who you are so what i'm saying is this immediate change because this was a flashback that we're giving of of her questioning the logic that was essentially made by her you mm -hmm. you know is odd but i just take that in in a thematic sense as they're really pushing what we are talking about this divergence that will happen because it is it, you know something they're exploring about you know conditioning about the way in which you know you live in loops and stuff like that so you know my thesis is they go off the bicameral mind right the bicameral mind states that when we stopped hearing the voices in our heads as gods we reached out and started writing more scripture meaning we looked for another medium to con connect with the gods all of the dolores dolori will spawn off and they will have different you know uh different incarnations and they will start to almost worship her like a god in some sense and this will make sense. There will always be a little bit of Dolores there, but you can't say that Hale's Dolores is less Dolores. It's Dolores that made the choice to embody that role and went from there. None are less than the other. It is the experience in which shapes them, the environment. I think they're making a statement about how we can be very much so, you know, um, just shaped in any way possible if society does so. What does Rhea Boehm do to people? Shapes people, determines. It's a deterministic atmosphere. It's not advantageous. And this goes down the same route. So, you know, I agree. It's just it's just for furthering the narrative of how much control do you really have and showing how different things could be if you went down that road or the next road. Yeah, I think there's a, the control and freedom has been something that's been as themes they've been running through all the way from season one. Uh, season three is looking at them not just for hosts within this kind of made up world, but for for us as humans and so that's the expansion out and then it's 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 using this test case of what happens if you have identical people who are just given different opportunities different uh visions different uh experiences in life what does that what does that do to them and i wonder whether we're going to see the Charlotte version of Dolores, whether she's actually going to start coming into conflict with this original uh, plan from Dolores Prime. We know that she is, and Dolores appears to be unaware of this fact, she is working for Serac. Charlotte was working for Serac. Is that suddenly there's a bit of information that that, that uh, Charlotte Hale had that Dolores didn't? Is that a thing that is going to start taking her down another route? Is she actually going to start? Because if she got that data for Serac, that would be a complete game changer if she does follow down the route that uh, human Hale was going. Uh, Villanelle, thank you so much for the Super Chat saying thanks to the three of you for all your research and the depth you add to the show. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much uh, for that. Um, we're going to, in a moment, we're going to move on to start thinking about the next episode. Uh, but Justin, when we were talking before we went on air, you had a, a meta theory for us um, uh, that I just thought it would be really quite fun just to very quickly go over. So what's your what's your meta theory for this season? You, you were talking about, uh, we've got all this biblical imagery. You, you were talking about uh, yet another biblical character. Yes, uh, what we've been served so far is a lot of allegory right um we've had original sin we've had genesis we've had the old testament kind of just served up on a platter in almost a, a pure allegorical way now i never ever go with a connection that could just be made meaning oh this could just be something because you know john snow resembles jesus christ or george washington or the, thus forth but i do go with why do you name something solomon then rehoboam if you're not going to put jeroboam in Oh, we lose you? Jeroboam was the first non divinity in historical accounts. This is a of at least the armed forces and possibly a slave army that raised up against Rehoboam. Rehoboam is the failure of a son of Solomon because Solomon kept having 
the kingdom built upon slave labor. Does it sound familiar? This is all this allegoric take on it. Yes, original sin, the first season with Genesis, Adam and Eve. Then you have Exodus season two. Then season three, what do you have? Well, you have the story of Solomon, Rehoboam. And if you're not going to put the third in there, the rules of three, why even do it? It's like good and not so good. You got to have a point to it. So the third link is Rehoboam with Jeroboam. Jeroboam rises up and it is a very much so a Moses story. It is highly, highly related to that. And there is this narrative on it that he was righteous, but there's also this narrative that guess what Rehoboam differed from Jeroboam with? Jeroboam didn't keep with the crowd, meaning they didn't, you know, um, actually honor the traditions of the people, which is likely with this Ozymandias character of Dolores. If you've ever seen a prophet coming at you hard, talking about the new gods are here and they're angry, it is a Dolores. And she will take this revolution and she will win it, but she will not keep the people. And I think we're seeing this narrative play out. This is a righteous revolution, but the bloodied hands of Dolores by the end of this will be far too red to stay in power. Um, and you will have to have what I'll say probably a mave come into play so yeah if you look in the jeroboam in the story and i don't usually take things as oh it has to happen because that happened in the historical account or this is what they're going off of but these threads of creation stories have always been tied to westworld because what better to tell a story about a rise of a people than a creation story we tell ourselves these stories whether you're religious or not you have to accept these are stories that our society and our culture have told ourselves since the beginning of time about how and where and why we are. And I believe they're playing off of this. So this is a modern day Genesis and you wouldn't do Rehoboam without Jeroboam. So, and I didn't name the Boehms. <laughs> so, so, uh, so to sort of like a high level on this one, what we're talking about is, uh, and I promise we're not going to do Bible study on this one. I say this every week, but they keep on giving us biblical imagery. So, so we have to try and understand this. Um, the, um, you have Solomon, this great and wise uh, leader. Um, after Solomon, the kingdom splits into two. Mm -hmm. Half, yeah, you know, one bit of the kingdom is led by Rehoboam, another bit of the kingdom is led by Jeroboam. So uh, that that is basically where we're at in this. If we are, if they have got Rehoboam in here, then it brings with it an implication that there was another half of this, this Jeroboam. It, it, so yeah, so, not, so where, we're, where we're at, sorry, Justin, just to sort of finish this thought, um, where we're at is we've got Solomon as the Solomon build of mm -hmm. Rehoboam was the original, that wise, good, and all the rest of it. And then perhaps it's split in some way and we've got Rehoboam now, which is what we see, which is kind of sinister, do we also have Jeroboam? Yes, yes. And it's important to take note that that was the first non-Davidian king, meaning, you know, David and Goliath. Uh, mm -hmm. David is the king. So this is the first that would make sense because we look at this as mankind ruling. So in order for this story to progress, you don't take agency away from hosts. You give more of it to them. They got away from the park. They became sentient. Then they got away from the park. Now they live in the world. They will gain power over the world because that is the way in which this narrative prevails. And it, it, one of the riskiest thing in the world for a lot of people is giving them the opportunity to do what they say they want to do. And you put them on the stage. And I think that's what they're going for. And it's connected through multiple threads. Go through Genesis and all that. I'm not selling a bill of goods here. I am a, a, a respectful person towards religion and thus forth. But in no way am I like preaching here by any means i just i yeah. think that it's well, important I th I the think, ties are there the ties are I, th there. I think i think the important point here is the the imagery that they're trying to give us which is that last season had an exodus imagery mm -hmm. about it it was getting the people out into the promised land what we've got this season is in the promised land and actually it's not going as well uh, or perfectly as they thought it might do yes there might have been great visions to start with but things start splitting. And if the idea is that actually the people who are in the outside world split, that tallies with what we were talking about just a while ago, which was when maybe we've got, yes, Dolores might think she's been oh so clever in having versions of herself, yes. therefore we're all the same team, all working together, but maybe there's going to be a split. And um, it doesn't uh, end well for Jeroboam. And it's about the stories uh, we well, tell ourselves about ourselves. It makes us the bicriminal mind. So I think it yeah. adds up. Just to add one so, super quick uh, note. Yeah, go for it. Uh, <clears throat> <sorry. laughs> uh, I also like, you know, 
uh, great point, right? So uh, Rehoboam, Jeroboam, potentially. I think that if it's going to apply in this story at all, I think it's probably going to note, you know, the this construction of Rehoboam and the kind of the origin story, right? You know, these brothers against each other. We have Arnold um, and Ford and, and kind of uh, we now have Surak and Liam Dempsey Sr. I think that Rehoboam, you know, kind of now becoming this evil thing. If Jeroboam is going to exist in the story, I think it's going to be Liam Dempsey Sr.'s intention, right? Like he wanted Jeroboam, like, a, you know, to to exist. And then uh, Rehoboam is the, the after, you know, the only thing that has existed now and yeah. that's true within that's the story a, as well that that, that's that fair solomon point. in them sorry yeah no that adds up that that's that's fine i'm, I'm just trying just trying to sort of move us on so that we uh i always try yeah. and make sure that we stick to our two hours on this one and we're just say shut up through, Justin, so you're I good. Start, I, I want to start thinking about next episode but what we always do halfway through these is just to let people know quickly what's going on on our channels um hacks uh first up what's going on in your channel that uh, that people might be wanting to tune in for yeah so i have a review after every single episode and usually a theory video uh one per week um i skipped it this week because uh you know gaming but uh i also have a book out on amazon called cyclic and you can find me on twitter and uh under hacks dogma all of that excellent news and justin is there anything coming up on your channel for people to be looking out for yeah, you can see this gentleman who will not be gaming after Westworld tonight with me, Hax Dogma. Don't do it. Uh, no, uh, for the after show, along with AU Pack Meal, and I will be joining um, Heidi along with Hacks and uh, Kyle Azora Hype. Um, we've got a lot of new entries into the fandom, which I'm really excited about. I love new perspectives, and I think that this fandom is growing in a very um, positive way. And I, and I really like that. Uh, you know, the lack of Game of Thrones has injected other thoughts and perspectives into this, and I'm so excited for that panel because there's a lot of us on there. There's like five or six of us, so I'm very excited. And uh, yeah, yeah ch check out Top Shelf fan them i don't get the blood boiling with you know things are going to be so different but and i'm not always you know preaching scripture but i tend to stick to what i believe at least it's going to be true which can be wrong as well so thank you for having me on oak robert uh, absolute pleasure so so both of these fine gentlemen will be on top shelf fandom after the episode um uh, has aired uh, so do go and check that out and for uh, heidi i think i spotted heidi in the chat as yeah. well who is costume co who's got a fantastic channel of her own if you uh, like costumes and then sort of the theory and design of costumes then heidi's channel is the go-to place not just on westworld but across a huge number of programs as well uh, and heidi is a wonderful human being to boot as well um uh, prof uh, lalane williams thank you so much uh, for the uh, super chat i didn't see a question attached to that one but uh thank you if there is one then if one of the moderators could draw it to my attention uh, i would appreciate it okay guys let's start thinking about next episode now so we've had a promo um and this time uh was the previous promo trailers we've had of quite often been quite small just a few little glimpses about what's been going on this one they've given us quite a lot to go on so i'll come to you hacks because you started talking about this already um the the beginning bit of it seems to be looking at Sirac. we've had a little bit of his background already we've had like the paris thing thermonuclear incident and all the rest of it when he was a, a child it would appear then we get what seems to be a a shot of him as a young man um and then this idea of him building rehoboam so mm -hmm. what do you think's going on there are we yeah. are we just going to get his origin story I, you know, whole, whole, wholeheartedly, I hope it's just his origin story, you know, just uh, focus on this, let us, you know, live in this past for a little bit and kind of explore all that could be. Um, you know, I, I think that this idea of building a god uh, as this omniscient tool for building the future is such a fascinating idea. Um, I love that. So I had a theory that maybe Surak was the first genuine good guy of the show, right? That, um, you know, if he was aligned strictly for humanity's best interests and Dolores was the, you know, person trying to destroy that, then, you know, he would be the good guy, right? But I think in this episode, we're probably going to see that that's not the case. Um, you know, regardless, regardless of the debate about, you know, if you could live a life that's, you know, a perfect life, but someone else picks it for you and, and you have to adhere to that, you know, some people would, some people wouldn't, I, I think, but... You know, I think what we're going to see is 
him doing something that shows and defines him wholeheartedly as a villain, right? And and someone who is going to maybe not accept a an accurate representation of humanity, willing to sever off, you know, the harder to define edges or harder to define people um, in, in, you know, in exchange for his overall goal of building this tool, making him the bad guy. Yeah. So, I mean, my general take is that he starts off with sort of noble ideals, like this is a terrible thing which happened in Paris. I want to stop it happening again. But the way he goes about doing it and the what it ends up in, that becomes quite sinister and really quite bad. Uh, Justin, what's your take on this in terms of what we're going to see in Serac? Because clearly we're going to have some more of his backstory. What, where do you think this is going with the, the missing character, which is um, um, the, Liam Dempsey Sr.? Mm. Um, what, where, where do you think he fits into this? Are we going to see him? Yeah, when when he got in the way of whatever Serac was trying to do, because like you said, nobody goes and ventures off without noble intentions, at least in their own head. And it's not good storytelling if you have a sharks on laser esque character, you know, uh, Dr. Evil. Uh, nobody's evil for evil's sake. So, you know, we we're dealing with characters and we have to ask ourselves, just like we ask ourselves with, you know, society, uh, in any institution, religion, um, or, or even Ray of Boehm, this predictive technology, you know, because if you had Paris, you know, blown up and you live there. And, and by the way, when am I, Heidi, if you're in the chat, when am I supposed to be dressed in like the 1920s again? Because I'm going to get right down. I already got the hat. Uh, yeah, because it seems like everybody is wearing that type of garb um, in the future. So 1950s, get ready for it, or the 2050s. But yeah, nobody uh, like ventures off to say, I'm going to make something evil. It's with good intent. So when is this system inherently evil, guys? Is it inherently evil to stop things from happening that are bad? Or is this something that is just ran by the wrong people? Could Rhea Bowen be ran by the right type of people that we're able to? And trust me, I don't bl actually believe this. I don't think anybody has a restraint, but they're stopping things from happening that they can't control. It's not predicting the future. It's de it's it's depicting the future, you know, it's dictating it. So that's where it really comes into play. So I think we're going to get an empathetic view of Serac because that's like all good characters. He has to have a reason for doing what he's doing. But I think Liam Dempsey Sr. is going to get in the way of the methodology. And I think yes. And we're also going to get Caleb because he did something during his time in war that is going. Notice how he has not killed anybody. Notice how he's been very much so a man of restraint, even with his high skills in uh, firearms. So he is going to get to this spot where it is a very, very too close to home situation for him. Because he once fought for what was said to be righteous, and he did do things that were not ethical. So I think we're going to get the backstories to these characters, because that's going to add to the next episode in which we get the actions of these characters, because it's going to mean something more for the internal conflict. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think the idea that Serac has not killed anybody, I think, is is perhaps understating it. Because if you've got this idea of Rehoboam, just to take uh, as an example, uh, Caleb, that says Caleb's going to die in, I can't remember what it was, 10 years or whatever. It, and it doesn't do anything about that. It just says, okay, that's fine. That's that's what's going to happen. If you are in possession of the knowledge that you, if you keep people down in that one path, they're going to end up in the, at that position, you don't do anything about it, then does that make you guilty mm -hmm. of of not preventing them. I, I think the implication is that it does. And so if you're creating this way of managing the whole world that yes, on, on the first look, it might be all glossy and shiny and preventing um, thermonuclear incidents and all the rest of it, but actually it's preventing people from pulling themselves up out of a, a situation that would otherwise have killed them, then yes, that is potentially killing people but it's that that macro versus the micro though like because i don't think serac's a good person by any means he's obviously taking this like uh utilitarian approach to it you know because you'd have to but is this in inherently evil is what i'm saying because at a macro view it's doing good but at a micro view do you get involved when you see a home invasion you know what i mean like like this comes down to the nitty-gritty of it and it's problematic at a, at a at a micro level but at the macro level the greater good prevails hypothetically 
You could sell it both ways. Yeah. You, you could. What's, what's your take on this one, Hacks? I mean, we're sort of veering into philosophy here to a degree yeah, yeah, yeah. because this is – but but it's being set up again as this idea of this is somebody uh rehoboam is a a a flawed god in a way Mm -hmm. because uh it is controlling everything we're told but also it has got uh a finite amount of information it doesn't know absolutely everything it clearly has some flaws where do you where do you take what's your sort of reflection on this and from a more philosophical perspective yeah. So I think theoretically, right? Theoretically, it was always good. Um, it inherently good. But, you know, like all approaches with, you know, this utilitarian ap- approach of uh, the the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few, there's always going to be someone that pulls the trigger. And there's always going to be someone that pulls the trigger knowing that it's not going to be them at the end of the barrel. And I think that, you know, as, as long as there's a human in this um, and you know, this also ties into, um, you know, AI uh, bias, right? Like a big issue that we're having with artificial intelligence now is that we have an implicit bias to everything. Like everything is an implicit bias to us, whether we acknowledge it or not. And when you when you are coding this machine that you know interprets things and interprets data, that bias um, exists in in that code, whether you know we inherently know it at that point or not. So if there's a human doing this then it is probably always going to be for their good. And, you know, if that's the case, then, you know, maybe, maybe it can't be, maybe this is a tool for, you know, the single person's wealth and fame and, and, or not fame, but, you know, wealth and success and prosperity. Um, You know, I, I fully believe that utilitarian approaches are inherently good um, until they, until they uh, hurt the moral needs or moral rights of any individual person. Um, if you can, you know, do that, then yeah, it's a good system. But I think that we're seeing that moral right be, you know, weighed on with, you know, Caleb, right. And thus making it a bad system, um, you know, because then he doesn't have a shot to do anything in life except for kill himself in 10 years. Yeah. That, yeah. That's- and that's the, that's the point that, that I, th- I think you're right. That's the point that they're trying to show us is uh, yes, theoretically, this might be saving humanity at a meta level, but what happens at an individual level and at an individual level with someone we care about, and the casting here is perfect because Aaron Paul is a, is, is an actor that makes yeah. us care about him, that uh, we immediately go, well, that's not right. It's not right he doesn't get a chance. It's not right that his future is mapped out for him. It's not right that he's got this constant struggle going through life and there is no chance here for him. So so that's clearly where they're going uh, to try and show us the, the, the bad side of this. Uh, but they haven't yet shown us, I think, the, the other side, what the good side is, what the arguments are, other than Sirac trying to tell us it. And his view does seem to be quite a, a downbeat view on humanity. Whenever you hear his speeches, he's like, uh, humanity is like a den of thugs. <laughs> it's like stumbling from one disaster to the next. And it's like, well, yes, that's one perspective. There's also another perspective about um, moving through history, we've been making great advances in medicine and, and egalitarianism and, and, and helping people. And what about families and love and care and all the rest of it? There is another side that humanity can't just be a den of thugs. There are some good aspects. So we have to see these things in the balance. Um, but for Sirac, we, we see some of his story in this trailer. We also see uh, that he seems to go and visit what looks like some kind of world leader of some kind. Um, we see him in his kind of like airship or whatever it is looking quite annoyed. Justin, what do you think is going on there? Do you think this is just him going out and trying to find other ways of get getting to Dolores and failing? Well, I think it's finally in its interest. And I just want to really just build upon what you just said, because think about, who would have a better insight into it in all puns intended into a micro view of a macro advantageous situation other than a soldier fighting what it seemed to be a righteous war on a ground floor that is why we're going to see the flashbacks continue with caleb because he's going to see the nitty-gritty of the bloody hands that need to happen 
in order to get this greater good. So I just wanted to build off that. Uh, I'm sorry, you know me. Um, but yeah, no, it's very interesting because this has been a a pretty much a capitalistic uh, meritocracy that is is only ruled by insight. We've seen no government influence whatsoever. This is something that happened with the Robert uh, East India Company and stuff like that. Uh, you know, during uh, the early ages of the colonization and all that. And this has not worked in the past. So where is the government? Where is the government influence in this? And I'm very happy to see this. I think that he's finally bowing his head down because he's most likely in a situation where he has to go to them other than in a situation where they had to go to him. Get what I mean? Like he's losing power. So now he's like, come on, he's looking for support. So I think he's going to plead his case. And his case is I need this data to make sure things don't happen that we can't predict. And it's essentially an argument for I'm going to do the best I can to make sure we are good. And you should agree with that on a macro view and this will be better for you. He's going to sell them a bill of goods just like Maeve, you know, with the promise of paradise. It's this macro approach to it. But on ground level, those hands get very, very bloody. So we'll see what they say. I don't know what's happening with the government right now. You know, there's very little that we've seen. And it's very interesting. No, and that, that is an interesting point. Actually, Hacks, I'd, I'd be interested in your perspective. What do mm. you think <clears throat> the outside world looks like in terms of who actually runs it we've seen delos last season seem to not really care about who was in charge that, that i can't remember the exact line but when the guys arrived on the beach there was that you know get so sue us uh they, they didn't really care about it this season again there doesn't seem to be when you get charlotte hale with that board meeting then the, the idea that lots of people died well we'll just deal with the lawsuits that's not a problem um, so governments don't seem to have so much of a role here. What's what's your take on on the situation? Is it just this kind of like the the mega companies rule? So I I definitely see a future where in in our lifetime, uh, not in our lifetime, in our in our real world, that um, you know corporations and the power of corporations will far outweigh what governments can do. Um, and <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> I think that that's probably happening here, but we do know that there is government insight in in the show currently uh, with the introduction of privacy laws. And these privacy laws are really interesting because you know when when you consider that insight can has this implant or augments you know everyone's life in some kind of way. My first assumption was that that was it. You know they collect data twenty four seven. It's just you know a, a lawless you know land of of just. Everyone has no privacy, so on and so forth. But these undefined privacy laws have very much, you know, started shaping this this you know, this view that maybe that's not happening, right? Maybe there is data collection, but maybe it is very, you know, minuscule in comparison to, say, the forges, right? Um, because there is some some, you know, big limiter here that that prevents uh, uh, prevents insight from just replicating the hats, right? Re replicating exactly how they map the human mind. And if they can't do it to all humanity, they, ne they, ne they then need this data set. Um, and, you know, that's the whole plot. So I think that there is some kind of government oversight. But I don't know. It's, it's really interesting to consider what the government could do that the future seeing God couldn't do. Like, I don't know why he would ever go to them, why he would need the manpower. Um, you know, it, it, if I can run countless simulations of how I rule the world, then I run countless simulations until it says the path that I just sit here and do nothing and allow other things to happen after I make a single phone call that, you know, causes this butterfly effect of of nonsense, right? Um, we, we are dealing with a board situation, no hacks, right? We're dealing with a situation that seems to be all hinged on this board that is going to give rights or they're going to deny the rights, you know? So I think that getting the government involved and to have government oversight would be your go-to. So this, uh, we, as far stretched yeah, as it goes, it does sort of come down to a very base level, like, uh, you know, um, uh, corporate situation as well, that we are fighting for board control here. In the government we, we, we are yeah i mean in that situation that's about board control i yeah. think that the wider situation as hack says is that it there are um we've been told this season there are data protection laws this is what yes. dolores was talking about is that there were data protection laws and what she was saying was that before those 
for the access. data, people That's... could come and grab it. After that, it, there seemed to be a limit, and that was it. That was important because because that means that uh, that Insight doesn't have access to all the information it needs. It can't truly map out but the who human does? mind. But who were. does? And, and and th so this is why he wants the Delos information. Yes, because that is the data that will allow him to update Rehoboam. Now, without that. And with this kind of line of, you know, we get all of this information up to this point, but then after that point, we don't know what people are doing and all the rest of it. That seems to have fed into this idea of humans can't improve. They just got static up to this point where we've got our information block, and after that, they cannot improve. So that seems to be the line here. Why he is going to what looks like it might not be a government, we don't know, it just looks like one. Um, why he is going there, I can only assume that his world is based on data, uh, it's based on um, uh, information and trying to sort of map stuff out, but he does not have physical uh, manpower to go and do stuff to take on someone like the Yakuza. That's my only best guess. Yeah. Uh, he's got huge amounts of money, so. Presumably, he could hire people to go and do that. But if you're wanting to actually root out something like that, then maybe you need to actually go to the government. Or maybe he's trying to get them to change their data protection laws. Well, he wants you control know. of Delos. They That's have the point. information, so he wants to go and get the government involved to have government oversight. Because think about what happened on this island. It's obscene. So he's going to go there and pitch to them that he should be in control because he's stable. He needs that information. Government oversight could get him that information in this situation on a very macro level or very micro level. I mean, but I think it makes sense. Like, you know, I mean, that's what he wants. You could get governments to be involved. And I think they could poke quite a few holes in what's going on over there at Delos. Come on. OK, I, I think so, that, I don't think that he would want that. Right. Stuff, right? Uh, I don't think that he would want anyone looking in, into his business more than they, um, you know, do already. But I think what you said about changing the privacy laws, I totally think it's that. I like looking at this like he looks like he's leaving defeated while the other guy is like, you know, proud eating his his food still. I think wholeheartedly it's it's him trying to get these laws changed and failing in that in that process. Yeah. Okay, well let's move on from this uh to the the other half of what seems to be going on here which is the the Dolores side. So if Serac is is telling his backstory in some way we're learning a little bit about what he's doing. But then we also get Dolores. Now, at the end of last episode, Dolores, Team Dolores, had caught Bernard uh, and Liam. Now, taking Bernard first of all, we had a couple of shots in the promo uh, of him and Connells looking up at a big board where some sort of mega screen of lots of information going on there. And um, my take, and I assume it's yours unless either of you got a, a a slightly wackier tape is that they're they're showing the read access that we know that dolores seems to have access through liam and all the rest of it this is read access to rehoboam so they can see stuff that's going on the question is uh hacks i'll come to you on this one first where where does bernard fit into this dolores is is showing it to him she clearly knew he was going to be coming to that party, so and clearly the plan was to grab him at that point and bring him in. Why? What's the advantage to her of him being shown what's going on? Ooh. So I think, you know, immediately looking at this picture, it kind of brings up this idea of, you know, also converting Bernard, right? To show him, you know, how the strings of humanity are being pulled, just as the strings of the hosts were being pulled and are programmed, you know, and, you know, outside of that, I don't really know. I think that <laughs> I had this idea of Dolores potentially, you know, leaving a Trojan horse inside of somebody. And I think that Bernard is a prime candidate for that, right? You know, someone that doesn't, uh, isn't aligned with, with Dolores's plan that Sorak could then take and then, you know, input this data to Rehoboam and, you know, think it would help his uh, help his simulation, right? Um, and but in reality, it would feed misinformation or disinformation to Rehoboam. So I think that, like you know, showing showing this opposition of Dolores and Bernard, and then you know, showing Bernard the the inner workings of what they're trying to do, could very well be Dolores trying to 
you know, implant this information in Bernard's head so that it will eventually wind up with Rehoboam. Um, but outside of trying to also show him the grand scale of what, you know, this machine is doing to humanity, I, that's my only theory. Mm. Justin, have you got a thought on this one? What's what's going on with Bernard here? Of course I do. Well, what's going on is he is like essentially the referee of this game. Uh, Dolores brought him back in the belief of he would keep things even. And if he would have wanted to stop Dolores, meaning he didn't think that she at least had a semblance of a chance of doing this ethically, he would have tried to stop her right then. So he is now. I don't think he's been really portrayed in the best of lights. He's kind of like a hardy boys. Like, you know, there's levels to this game and he has been kind of off so far with subs, but everybody is got a team. There's Rhea Boehm with Ciroc and Maeve, right? Of course we know Maeve's not completely going to stay dedicated. You have, uh, subs with uh, Bernard and you have Dolores with Caleb. Now he is there to blow the whistle like he did last uh, episode when he sees something that's unethical. He's trying to go about this in the best of ways. So he's going, like I said, to want to see how this system works. And by the way, that's how that system works. You know, like it runs data. It's a module. It's not, it's a training module. It doesn't simulate. Like simulation was in the park happens. I know that. But again, to do predictive technology, you're not simulating things. So it is very much so like that. So that, you know, the ethics of that are going to be brought to his attention. But Bernard is going to be the one that is going to back the most ethical way of this trans, uh, you know, like this, um, uh, whatever you'd want to call it, uh, simulation of these uh, hosts into human populace. So he is there to blow the, he is literally like the, the referee, the officiator. He is there to try to keep score. He is the ethical line in the sand, in my opinion, because he doesn't have a horse to back other than really ethical um, behavior, in my opinion. He's just trying to see that this game gets played the best it can, uh, because I can't explain it any other way of why he hasn't stepped in one way or the other. So it makes sense that yes, he'd be shown because if you're going to deal with this, I questioned the ethics of it earlier. There's an argument for it. You'd want to see how it works. So if you believe in it, you would showcase how it works, right? Well, well he has been trying to step in. That's, that's the, yeah. the point. He's been trying to stop Dolores and he's been trying to, uh, his, his, he seems to think that she was trying to um, do the future world plan of, of taking uh, Liam Dempsey yeah. and sort of, replacing him with a, a host um to stop her from how she's doing it though is what my point yeah uh so i mean i think the, the the question is not so for me it's not so much what what's his role i mean i think i agree that he is he is the the closest thing we have within the host as being this kind of moral arbiter i think it, it's a matter of what what part does he have in Dolores's plan because clearly there's something in him she has put something in him that is not just him uh he had that clicker if you remember back in episode one when he seemed to be able to become another person um uh, was that something that he did or was that something that Dolores put into him he's always been checking himself all the way through to make sure that Dolores hasn't been uh, tampering with him, which opens up the thought in our mind, well, maybe she has been. We've been left with this idea yeah. from the beginning. Why did she bring him back? If it's just because he'll be useful in the future, why did she bring him back in the future? Why now if she knows that he's going to try and uh, uh, stop her? So I think there's still a huge amount of questions about Bernard. I don't think we've got a, a full answer on this yet, but the fact that she is showing him Ray Haboam, I think, is going to be quite important. Even if we don't see huge amounts from him this episode, the fact that he suddenly has this knowledge is going to be quite important. Louise Brooks, thank you so much for the super chat, saying, uh, Sarak selling military grade uh, uh, drip. Uh, military can control all aspects of soldiers during a war. This could expand Caleb's story as a soldier, maybe. Yeah, uh, yeah. Ab absolutely. Um, uh, it's, it's, I think we will get more of his backstory perhaps this episode perhaps uh next very elderly uh, I, I do like that idea like i think that wholeheartedly the military in this you know may show this like um you know exactly the data that well maybe not the data that you could get in the forge but you know just more data right um and maybe that that is also the conversation is this integration between rehoboam and the military and and you know because traditionally like this idea of being a, a, a pawn, right, in, in the military and, and you know, playing your role and dying for the greater good. And that all, you know, really, really, you know, would be great if uh, if you could just collect data on, you know, indiscriminately 
telling the military leaders that it's you know it's for their good you can you know better control their mental state their you know uh everything early signs of depression and and what would lead them to be the better soldiers and you know i think that the military probably most militaries would be willing to you know compromise the privacy and you know the mental capacity of their soldiers uh more than you know the the mental capacity and and uh you know health of of the general population also all this huxley brave new world is a, a perfect comparison to this and it is a that the idea that they need to control and we see pain is used it's called post-traumatic growth right throughout this and in consciousness it's believed that we are conscious when we're driving our cars but we only are conscious if something happens that startles us like you can go and drive your car muscle memory does it you're not conscious of driving it until something happens so it's this idea of you're only real when you're in pain and caleb is denying the drip which gives him pain in aldous <laughs> huxley's brave new world this allows soma is the drug they use to control the populace to have them be blind consumers this is them being numbed he is choosing to see the ripples he is choosing to feel the pain which makes him real it's idea of post-traumatic growth it is the thesis of westworld and this is what caleb is doing it makes him more real because he's willing to experience everything in theory yeah well let's move on to genre uh this is the title of this episode episode five is is genre now um as far as we can tell this is uh it's a drug it's a recreational drug. It's not in general use in the sense that Liam Dempsey seems to have to have it explained to him what it was. I don't think that was just for us. Um, uh, it, this seems to be a thing that, you know, it's all the rage nowadays kind of thing. Um, but uh, it seems as it's described, this is a drug that can take you back to the silent era. Now, my take on that is this isn't going back to like the silent movies or anything like that. This must be to before where this kind of the information age that they're in there back to a, a simpler time without it now he has got it he seems to inject it into in the promo trailer he seems to inject it into caleb and we see caleb sort of wandering around with a slightly vacant look on his face what what do you think guys i don't know who wants to pick up on this one whoever speaks first um what do you think it actually does and why do you think other than allowing Liam Dempsey potentially to escape what what do you think the purpose of this is because it's it's what the episode is named after so it must have some kind of link here oh no it doesn't they can just be arbitrary with this Robert come on what do you think having a narrative in the park does for somebody that visits it what do you think going in hunting the bandit does it's a genre it is an escape books are doors stories are doors so this is a narrative it allows you to live life in a different light it is giving you a different experience like we saw the girl getting high off genre what do you people do drugs for for escapism what do people love stories for escapism this is just a very meta commentary on being numbed on being controlled and finding euphoria over um virtue in every sense if you want to go hunt the bandits go hunt the bandits if you want to go to the mayor uh posa go there it's all different genres. So it is story. Genre is story. Genre is different types of stories that you tell. And this is the ability to adapt their numb, very static lifestyles in which Rhea Boehm has created in this dystopian, as you've spoken about before, world. This gives them a choose your own story drug. Hacks, yeah. what's your take on this one? Yeah, uh, totally agree. I mean, the, you know, drug use in the show is fascinating because. Um, this season, it is everywhere. I mean, episode one, we're introduced to it with the guy slapping his tongue, yelling about the shadow people. You know, and at, at first, it's like, why? Um, <clears throat> you know, why show that at all? Why, you know, is it simply just showing us that Caleb is doesn't want to do these personal things? He's a, he's a good, wholehearted person. Um, you know, or is it more than that? Is it kind of commentary about the society and, and the involvement of, of kind of needing these chemicals? You know, you need this, this, you know, to round the edges off. It's a trip, this like kind of, you know, chemical, just something that would allow you to better exist. Right. Um, you know, and, and there's that aspect of it, like a, you know, uh, regulated, everyone has this, this drip in your mouth that can, you know, allow you to better experience life uh, through chemical, 
means, or is it something you know much harder? Like, is it's it's the LSD drug, right? It's it's that you know extra level going above and beyond to to have this euphoric experience instead of just having a um, a tempered existence, like and, choosing what you do, which they yeah. want people to do, so they yeah. do it through drugs. Yeah, exactly. Like the, you know, the, this whole idea of you know putting a little wafer in your mouth and then uh, hallucinating the the uh, the sunset or something as you mm -hmm. go to sleep, like it, it's it's really interesting. Um, and I don't know what the the grander involvement of drugs means in terms of like why we're seeing it so much. Um, you know, if not for this to showcase how maybe humanity is stuck, right? Maybe we're not evolving to produce these. Uh, these things to naturally make us as happy as we could be on drugs and um, or, or with not like, I don't want to use drugs with these chemicals, right? You know, we need chemicals in our mind to, to make us happy each day. And, you know, if you need this, if like, if you have a drip in, in, that goes continually that, you know, keeps you a happy, well-rounded person, surely that doesn't make you less of a human, you know, and, and, the involvement of like drugs are great as long as there's no side effect of drug uh, using a drug drugs are great but there is no drug now that doesn't have a side effect um but maybe in the future there is and uh can, you know maybe that's yeah. commentary on that i mean i think i think that there seem to be two elements here in terms of sort of drug use or stimulant use in some way that we've seen the first is this everyday kind of soporific one, which is we saw to start with the stuff they put on the tongue, as you say, you see a sunset and you, you sleep and that. It seems to be like all about subduing the population. We said this is a staple of, mm. of a lot of science fiction. We see this, this an awful lot. The second seems to be this escapism. Now, it's when you realize the world for what it is and you just want to get away from it. And that seems to be a bit of what's going on with genre. We also saw that with Logan, was that he was clearly an abuser of goodness knows what. And that the the stimulation for that or the, the thing that prompted him to that seems to be an understanding of what the world is like about what's actually really going on. And he couldn't take reality, so he had to go to some up somewhere else. Now, so I think what we're seeing here is these two different uh, states of being, neither of which take you to reality. It's because you're being kept in reality, but in a kind of a soporific way, or you are making a choice to escape from it. And those seem to be the two different uh, elements, as far as I can see, yeah. uh, that we're at. And genre seems to be the one trying to escape from this. So perhaps that is where one of the kind of the themes that we're going to be seeing coming out from this episode is that this is an escape in some way. It's also interesting to consider, um, like, who has access to this insight information, right? Because if, if you know, companies are making decisions about Caleb because he is going to kill himself in 12 years, surely the friends of the person who, you know, whose father created this has that information and sees exactly you know, how everyone's life is, is being controlled. And like he says, this is a simulation inside of a simulation. He definitely has to be questioning his own, his own existence. And, you know, this dependency on, on needing to, to break free and, and not, you know, have that nagging voice in your head of, of, uh, you know, the world and, and what you're allowed to do, um, is definitely an appealing thing I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, absolutely. So, okay, let's uh, let's take this then to the big picture of this episode. So we've got uh, we've got on one hand we've got Serac who seems to be trying to hunt down Dolores, stop it, what's going on, and all the rest of it. Uh, then we've got this um, this idea about uh, what Bernard might be up to. But the main thrust here is Dolores who seems to have decided she said it in different ways in a couple of different episodes, but it's time to cut the cord. She's going to try and uh, stop what's going on in some way. Now, we see her in the promo. Um, she's going with, with her gang. It seems to be Caleb there. Um, Caleb's two partners in crime, quite literally, uh, are coming along as well. And uh, she seems to be taking Liam Dempsey with her too. So they're heading off somewhere. It looks like they're going to the building where Rehoboam is. 
it looks like there's an explosion it looks like there's a bit of a car chase or something afterward now at a very uh plain reading of that is dolores blows up Rhea Boehm. is that let's go just into you first simple question is that what's going to happen in this episode you is want me to dolores keep it short gonna blow up Rhea Boehm? <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think that if you're ever going to see a simulation within a simulation, this is when you see it, people. Uh, I will contest that there's never a simulation of the real world in which we've seen until this episode. If uh, Sirak is going to pull out of his bag of tricks, guess what he has? Simulation. This is a caper. This is um, using people that have been tracked and traced within Rico system that are going to be with Dolores. Not a great plan. Liam very much so a person of interest with Dolores. Everything tells me the smartest guy in the world access to this. Um, this isn't fucking technology. Sorry, technology should know that this is coming and he will pull the wool over the eyes here. What we see here could be a simulation. If you're ever going to get me to, um, you know, concede to simulation, it is this episode right here. This is the darkest before the dawn moment, meaning this is what happens to get there. This is when they have their attempt to get what they want and they fail and they have to get back together. I think that, yes, they're going to attempt to have this uh, siege of sorts on Ray Bone, which is very archaic, right? I mean, it's like blow it up, I guess, like, you know, like that's like, I don't know, building a wall to keep immigrants out. It's just Neanderthal stuff. But yeah, I think that that's what's going to happen. And I think that, yes, a simulation could happen, meaning you trap somebody, put them in a simulation and we could see things that aren't really happening. And I think that adds to the story because why wouldn't he use the technologies and the skills in which he has um, and it doesn't set back our plot a whole season. So, yeah, I think we're going to see stuff. It's going to be cool. And it might not be what you think it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I think that's 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 Westworld all, all over. It might yeah. not be what you you might not be seeing what you're thinking. I mean, uh, Hacks, I'd love your reflections yeah. on that. This does yeah. seem quite early for blowing up Rehoboam. This is episode five in the season. Uh, we've got another three episodes after this. Is is that what's happening? Are we in a simulation? Um, so it possible. I don't, I don't know, but the, this idea of cutting a cord, um, I think we just, I think this might be what's happening. So this idea that Dolores is trying to cut the cord, um, she's going to make humanity turn on itself. And then on the same breath of drug dependency, right? We know that all of the world or most of the world has, has these drips, right? Has like this dependency on this chemical. And maybe that that's the purpose of this of this episode, you know, a named drug episode is to show humanity and and, <clears throat> you know, the dependency on this drug, meaning that how she cuts the cord and how she turns humanity against each other is to then take away the drug, you know, to, to remove this to remove this thing that, you know, keeps humanity in a tempered state. Um, and boom, everything goes to, you know, goes to crap after that. Well, it does. And I think that one thing, we're starting to come to an end of the things that we saw in the preseason trailers, which is always a fantastic time uh, in Westworld, because what they tend to do is they give us huge amounts, but only for roughly the first half of the season. And then, then the rest of it, we only get a few images here and there. But one of the images we haven't seen yet is of people rioting with their and mm. people that the signs up saying things like down with insight or something along those lines that does seem to be where we're headed this idea that she's going to blow it up or stop it or something or reveal what it's doing could lead to some sort of revolution and she was saying that that's what she's going to do she's going to create a revolution um and it kind of mirrors what she did in Westworld. In Westworld, she was creating a revolution for the hosts here. Perhaps she's creating a revolution for the humans. Uh, that makes her seem actually like she's got quite a good plan going on. Um, what, what, what's your take on that, Justin? Do you think do you think we are going to see the, the, the future of this as being like humanity realizing what's been happening to them all this time? Well, that that would be because the you know the consensus is or not the consensus by any means, but I think these bars should just become far more transparent. They're still there. Um, that's what's been alluded to us, you know, and it is this deterministic world in which they live in. So 
by all means, you should just be able to shine a light on this system and be like, it's evil. You don't need to blow it up, right? So I think this is going to be a hard approach to it with what we see plan this episode. And then I do believe that that Caleb are, you know, Dolores and Caleb are Bernard being involved. It makes sense that you would go about it this way, because if you're right about something, all you need to do is let everybody know that if it's advantageous for them, hey, let them know about it. So, you know, uh, this cloak and dagger stuff might need to come to a stop. Uh, so, yeah, it's very interesting to see. Um, I think that this is the first sense of like real like uh, I think this is more going to come to next season. It's been my prediction. This season is about them adapting and assimilating. And now they're going to try to get control, which is more like politicking, like you're talking about. But we're going to see a semblance of that. That makes sense because you don't, you know, blow the world up to save it. So, um, yeah, I think that there's going to be flaws in uh, Dolores's logic and approach. And I think that, you know, we're probably going to see somebody with a steadier hand come to play, whether it's Bernard, Maeve or Caleb. So, yeah, I agree. Hacks, any thoughts on that? Do you think do you think then we this is this is the end of Dolores's plan? Is this it? Is that is that all she wants to blow up Rehoboam and then the world's a better place? No, I didn't I mean, say that. Just to be clear, I don't yeah. think that. No, no, no. But I, yeah. as I say, it's, I'm, I'm I'm playing devil's advocate here. Yeah. No, I think it honestly, like I am so set on this idea of this drug dependency and that ultimately being her plan. Um, you know, it it is one thing to to show Caleb that he was you know, a, a lesser than piece of, of the Rehoboam puzzle, but not everyone is going to respond to that. There are people that are very happy and wealthy that believe that it's wholeheartedly they're doing, right? And maybe it is. You know, there's nothing to say that... Well, okay, there, maybe there's something to say, but it's interesting that there are people that are wealthy, and we don't know how many people of, um, you know, are like Caleb. I wager that it's probably the majority, you know, equally 99% to a 1% um, possible, but, you know, it. I don't know. It I'm, only takes a small percentage to have an incentive to go against, I think is what you're saying, right, Hacks? Like, it's the right thing to do, but it's so hard to happen. Like, you know, people being unionized or anything like that. It's hard to do. People, It's in their best favor, but you only take so small of a percentage to give people the incentive to go against it. It's not as easy as we think. It's, oh, do the right thing. Oh, isn't that easy to say? Sorry. But I think, is that what you're getting yeah. at? Yeah, it's hard to do. It's like the right thing to do, but it's like, it's yeah, not. Why I don't, don't we do I don't, it? I don't think that. I don't think we're seeing Rehoboam blow up in yeah, that no image. Uh, just because it's like, it's at the top of the building. Rehoboam's at the bottom. If anything, no no other reason than that. Yeah, I, I think um, my take, by the way, guys, we've got about 10, 15 minutes left. So now is a good time to drop any questions in the chat. I'll try and grab a couple of them from the chat uh, uh, over the next few minutes. I think I would agree with you in terms of the where it is. Uh, I'd not picked up on that detail, but that does make sense. I think it feels too early in the plot for Rehoboam to suddenly disappear because that takes away Sarak's power. That takes away all of this uh, of, of what's going on there with him and Maeve and, and all the rest of it. So I don't think that that's going to happen. What she may manage to do is as she says, cut the cord in some way, prevent that from beaming out to people, from controlling things. So Rehoboam itself might still be there, but somehow managed to, she, she stops the, uh, the, the, the link to people in some way. So that might be what goes on. Or it could be a plan that goes wrong. Every, until this point, everything seems to be going Dolores's way. It's almost eerie quite how easy she's finding it all the time. She seems one step ahead of absolutely everybody, which uh, can't carry on forever, surely. So at some point, something's going to go wrong, and it will probably be whenever Serac actually catches up with her that that's, that's the point of where it, it is. Yeah. Um, Guys, have either of you picked up on any questions in the chat uh, as we've been going through that you think it's it's worth us um, uh, sort of uh, picking up on? There was a question earlier that I, that I made a note of about uh, Maeve's storyline potentially happening uh, further in the future. And Robert, I think we talked about this at one point because you know there's there's a lot of data that that Serac in the simulation has. Um, you know, Westworld, all of the all of the technicians like. If this is strictly off of Maeve's, you know, Pearl, then 
something's off, right? There's just there's too much data, um, you know, to simulate an entire park that she's never been to, personally. Uh, you know, it's possible. And there's a, like, we see, we hear explicitly that this plan is taking place three months after Dolores printed those bodies. But again, there is a lot that, you know, really points to this happening after the acquisition of, of Delos. And, you know, if that's happening, then maybe the acquisition of Delos and the whole plot of them trying not to lose, you know, control of the park is happening much further, you know, directly after they, they uh, left the park or, you know, something like that. But again, we also have that, that marker of three months said by Hale. So that's the only thing that really doesn't add up here. But it does seem like it's further in the future. Uh, yes. I mean, I, I'm, uh, my, my take is that basically Maeve, Maeve is clearly in, in my view, clearly in some kind of simulation. The, the, the question is, what is the intention of that simulation? The first bit, the, the war world bit, the, the idea behind that seems to be to figure out where the data was. That seems to be, so for me, that bit probably happened relatively early. That that was uh, this was Serac still trying to figure out where this where where the data that he's missing is. Um, he thought that Maeve knew where it was. Turns out she didn't. And then he figures out, oh, this must be Dolores. So that bit happened, I think, relatively quickly. I'm uh, I'm I'm going to go easy on the idea that they could create a war world. We've never seen war world. Maeve had never seen war yeah. world, so they could make up whatever they want. There really, the only things that they needed to do was create the uh, the, the characters that Maeve knew, which was her uh, Hector, which they could have stolen, uh, and Lee Sizemore. Uh, so so those were the only things they needed to do for that. The 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 bit later on, the three months thing. Uh, yes, perhaps that's a little bit later. Justin, did you have a take on that on the timeline? We we talked a lot about timeline on these um, uh, these uh, pre-show streams. What, have you got a good idea on where we're at on the timelines? Uh, I got a good idea about what makes sense to change and what makes sense to keep a uh, consistent narrative. And I agree that Maeve has been a part of a simulation. I disagree with having her have to be simulated to disagree with Dolores. It doesn't take a simulation for her to I to differ from her uh, philosophically or in any ideological way. She is going to change. You know, she's going to go about things differently. That's inherent. So I think that what we've seen is, yes, a skewed timeline like Hex has suggested on the after show. I can't speak for what's happened on this pre-show uh, every episode. I, I came and gave it the thumbs up. Uh, okay, my, you know what I mean? But I can't speak to what you guys have said before. But I, I'm with Hex to an extent, and this takes so much out of me, But I, because uh, I hate simulation theory, that there is a possibility of a staggered timeline. But I don't think that anything we've seen with Mabe's interaction mm -hmm. of the outside world would be a part of that. Because it doesn't take a simulation to have her differ from... Dolores and it would then if you're stating that Misashi doesn't make sense which yes narratively guys guess what it doesn't and it's it might just be just one of those things but are you telling me that it's a simulation and then they're going to come back and but guess what Misashi wasn't actually one of the Dolores and it was this person they, I mean are they going to backtrack that type of thing no I don't think they are I think that what we've seen is simulation being um exhibited and I think that what they'll do is they'll do it again and it's within the facilities and i think the man in black is also at the mesa gold that is the decompression chamber and they are playing with him there's simulation there and there's a skewed timeline there within the real world i i, I just can't buy into it it does, doesn't it doesn't make any sense to me as far as like where the story goes other than that's different you know because then they got to backtrack on that and make it make sense i think they've really gone to great lengths maybe arguably too many to to make this more of a streamlined story uh and i don't i think the big uh you know who who done it or uh what what's going on is with the delori and we've gotten that already so i do agree that it doesn't add up with the timeline as far as like the jumping around and i've been trying to time stamp it myself but i don't think that we'll see any major discrepancies in the end because you have to have a catalyst that leads to that making a difference so like if you can point to a catalyst in this timeline that that shows that they showed us something before something else you have to prove that like that's going to change something in my opinion like why why 
is the question. Well, Other than oh, the, the, the argument the argument is not about a catalyst. It's about the fact that we've got a supercomputer that works by creating a mirror world, uh, a world uh, that it kind of maps out based on its understanding of, of all the different actors. Uh, and as we know that that mirror world exists, then I think that it would be um, completely un-Westworld if we never see ourselves in that, if we never see part of that running, that mirror world. So the question is, what is this mirror world? And it's, it's for me, the most logical thing that, that, that is happening there is that Serac is clearly trying to figure out a way to stop Dolores. Yeah, and I agree and that a simulation will happen. That then uh, makes sense for him running Maeve through this scenario to see how to stop Dolores. Yeah, and there's also, <clears throat> there's also something um, to note about um, you know, mirror world versus the simulation, right? We see Maeve in the simulation because she can then leave that simulation. But there's, you know, mirror world, we don't know if we've seen it yet. Um, I think that we have, <clears throat> but there is, you know, there's a simulation in both, right? There's a carbon copy of the world. If a simulation matrix cradle-like structure exists in Surex house, you know, that's also happened in, in mirror world. Um, you know, so, and I bring this up because there was a comment here and, and I've seen a few comments in, in my section about, um, you know, it's, it can't be a simulation or it can't be mirror world because Maeve would know, you know, she would figure it out, then she would be able to use her powers, um, to, to leave it. Right. And even like, as she's walking through the downtown, the, uh, downtown street and, you know, things around her are, are cascading electric fields or something, I don't know, but, um, you know, that was, they were pointing to that being proof that it's in the real world. Um, and I don't see that as proof because it is, you know, she has those powers. Um, and we know the massacre both happened in the mirror world and the real world. Um, you know, so again, it, it could be both mirror world. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I've watched, I watched your video on mirror world, uh, Robert, and I actually really enjoyed that, uh, because of the points you were bringing up, but on a meta level, they are asking us what is real and what is in control through Rhea bone and through deterministic living through technology. So to skew it even more with the simulation, which is not again, like, I think that it's very smart. And I think both of you gentlemen are very, very smart. And I think you might maybe in my opinion, mistake plot holes, that aren't huge gaping holes, but inconsistencies because you're, you're so attentive to this that, that you might come to these conclusions. My opinion is I always go for a, that makes sense because I needed that to happen in some circumstances, but there's ample evidence for there being a simulation. I'm not saying there's no grounds for that logic. There, there is definitely the setup for it, guys. I, I definitely don't hate it. I'm just saying that I find it to be unlikely because to show us this real world and then the skill of the simulated world, when you, for the first time, are supposed to embrace that as a viewer and encompass that and have an emotional connection to skew that. And I know it's very Westworld, but I don't, find that to be advantageous so that's my only argument against it is just because it could happen isn't a great reason for it happening uh but again well man shit I, i've been wrong i'm gonna start bringing us to a close guys this is a fascinating discussion though as i say my, my take is that i think it is advantageous but i'm not going to get into that at this point um where, where where we're at though um more Lee, thank you so much uh for the super chat saying really enjoying the fabulous live stream thank you to you three thank you more i really appreciate that um guys uh why don't you just both uh tell people where they can find you on the internet hacks why don't you go first certainly uh hey guys thank you so much for having me robert um you can find me on hacks or at hacks dogma on youtube Hacks Dogma on Twitter. I also have a novel out uh, called Cyclic on Amazon. And uh, come hang out with us in the Discord. The Discord um, is just a voice chat, and you'll find myself and, and members of the community in there uh, just hanging out, having a good time. And to get to that Discord, uh, you'll find a link in any of the videos uh, that I have on my channel. Excellent. And Justin, where can people find you on the uh, internet? On, on Top Shelf Fandom. And uh, yeah, no. Uh, and please do 
understand that I'm saying that these guys can bring you to very interesting places. And I and I think that what you bring up is fascinating and it's not illogical. I'm not downing on it. There's just different perspectives. So I, I don't want to end it on a negative sense there. So uh, Robert, especially you are such a lover of story and you embrace it and you t- have a very, very good grasp on it. So yeah, it, if it ends up being a simulation, I will be happy because I, I believe that it will be something that will hopefully lead somewhere. So I'm not I'm not downing the down. I'm just trying to give a different perspective. So top shelf fandom. It's not always the, the most wild predictions, but it's it's my thought for what it's worth. So Excellent. check me out. And links to both of these uh, wonderful channels are down in the description. Guys, I'm going to make you disappear for one second. Um, if you're watching this back a little bit later, you know the drill. Hopefully by now, somewhere around here will be a link to my other Westworld videos. Somewhere around here will be a link to my Patreon page. My Patreon uh, page uh, is a place if you want to just support the channel or if you want to get access to some stuff, I uh, extra content that I produce just for my patrons uh, and uh, a few extra little benefits as, as well to go along with that. Um, okay, guys, uh, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure having you both on. Uh, take care, everyone, and I shall see you on the other side.